What's happening, everybody? On today's show, the latest odds to win the SEC for 2022 are out. We'll run through who are the favorites and who are some teams worth taking a chance on with some good odds. Also, USA Today put out their post-spring top 25. We'll run through the SEC teams they have ranked ahead of uh, for next football season. And we'll run through some news around the conference, including Nick Saban speaking on tampering rumors, news on Eli Ricks, Chris Rodriguez, Locked on SEC starts right now. Are Locked On SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. is happening everybody welcome into locked on sec great to have you guys along today's episode is brought to you by bet online bet online has you covered this season with more props odds and lines than ever before bet online it is where the game starts i'm chris gordy thank you guys so much for making locked on sec your first listen every day remember locked on sec is free and available on all platforms including youtube and at locked on sec.com let's jump into it let's go around the conference Boots on the right. the Makes the hand off. Around the conference. And we start at Alabama as Nick Saban was at a a golf tournament this week talking with the media and, of course, the tie. They are the favorites to win the national championship this year. Get to more on that in just a bit. But they had to add some reinforcements to their receiving core. They lost John Mechie to the draft, Jameson Williams to the draft, and they have done that through the transfer portal. First thing they brought in was Jermaine Burton from Georgia. And most recently, they have picked up Tyler Harrell coming in from Louisville. Now, Wednesday, Saban was asked about Louisville head coach Scott Satterfield kind of making some implications about Alabama tampering with Harrell before he entered the transfer portal. Nick Saban shot that down. He he said, basically, uh, yeah, I don't know what that guy's talking about. Uh, Look, a lot of people are wondering, what is tampering? You know, understand it's the rule that the uh, you're not supposed to talk to a player until he enters the portal. But come on, once the kid says, I'm probably going to be entering the portal or he's looking around for some better opportunities, it happens. I'm not defending Nick Saban. I'm just saying he wouldn't be the first to uh, at least have his staff reach out to a player at another school prior to them actually entering the transfer portal. Because we hear a lot all the time of guys who – he plans to enter the transfer portal. Tell me when that news comes out, no schools reach out to that kid. They go, all right, let's wait, guys. Let's wait until that guy actually enters his name physically in that transfer portal online on the internets. Anyway, uh, whatever the case is, Harold, uh, it will be in Tuscaloosa for this season. See if he can fill the role of one of those wide receivers that uh, Alabama's looking for for their Heisman Trophy winner, Bryce Young. Over at South Carolina, they got a little bit of a schedule change for 2023, their non-conference football schedule. According to reports, the Gamecocks are going to take Liberty off their 2023 schedule and add Jacksonville State. That game will be played November 4th, 2023 at williams Bryce Stadium. Jacksonville State spent last season in the Atlantic Sun Conference. For 2023, they will be members of the Conference USA. Jacksonville State will join North Carolina, Furman, and Clemson on South Carolina's 2023 non-conference schedule. Over to Alabama, Eli Ricks, their new cornerback who transferred in from LSU this offseason. No reports a couple weeks ago where he was arrested in Mississippi. More details coming out from that story. Ricks was cited for speeding 91 in a 70. Eh, I've probably done that before. Uh, failure to have insurance, and he was also arrested for arrested for marijuana possession. Now, according to the full police report from AL.com, Rick said one gram of marijuana worth about $20. Uh, Rick is expected to be a key contributor for the Alabama secondary this fall. It has not been revealed if he will face any kind of punishment for his arrest. I mean, what do you suspend him? A, a half of the opener? A quarter? Don't start him? Have them coming off the bench. Uh, Alabama will open next season at home against Utah State. That'll be Saturday, September 3rd. 
Meanwhile, over Kentucky, Chris Rodriguez, their running back, he's facing multiple charges after a traffic stop in Lexington. He was stopped by Kentucky police on Sunday for careless driving, no tail lamps, and operating a vehicle under the influence of alcohol. Uh, Rodriguez, of course, made the big announcement back in January. He was coming back to Kentucky. He rushed for more than 100 yards in nine games last season. Finished the year with the school's fifth highest single season rushing yardage. So we will see uh, what will happen with Chris Rodriguez. But, man, it's, uh, it's that time of year where a lot of just off-the-field things you don't like to hear around college football. Some dark horse contenders when it comes to the SEC. CBS Sports analyst Shahan Jayaraja named one school from every Power 5 conference with a shot to disrupt the playoffs. And he picked Arkansas as the SEC's dark horse contender. Now, a few parts of Arkansas's roster are gone off to the NFL. Obviously, they lose Traylon Burks, but K.J. Jefferson, a lot of people believe he's ready to take that next step in his career. And Arkansas gets Cincinnati, South Carolina, and Texas A&M the first four weeks of the season leading into the Alabama game. In his section labeled Rich Strike Bets in honor of the horse that just won the Kentucky Derby, he included the Kentucky Wildcats, who could be a dark horse contender this year, worth putting a little money on. Will Levis, a lot of people are very high on. Chris Trapasso put out his early 2023 mock draft and has Will Levis going number one overall in next year's NFL draft. Kentucky won 10 games last season for the second time and, of course, got Chris Rodriguez back with Will Levis. Who knows? Kentucky could make some noise. Their defense is always good, a manageable schedule leading up to that November 18th game against Georgia. So we'll see if Kentucky and Arkansas can maybe make a dark horse run for the college football playoff. On Monday, Jim Nagy from the Senior Bowl, he was doing an interview and he tapped Kenny McIntosh from from Georgia as a potential breakout candidate for the 2022 season and the 2023 NFL draft. He likes McIntosh as a complete running back who can also contribute in the passing game as a receiver and a blocker. McIntosh had 22 catches for 242 yards last year. He's going into a senior season. Could be poised for a breakout year. Georgia's top two running backs off to the NFL. Zamir White and James Cook. are going to be looking for somebody to take over that workload. Of course, McIntosh will be one of those players, but he's also splitting duties with Kendall Milton. Dejon Edwards, Branson Robinson. So we'll see if Kenny McIntosh steps up and is that featured back for Georgia this year. And lastly, in some SEC hoops news. On Wednesday, the updated 24-7 sports rankings came out for the uh, 2022 men's basketball recruiting class. They had Arkansas signing Nick Smith in the number one overall spot. So a big, big, uh, obviously, signee for Eric Musselman and group Smith headlines that Arkansas class that includes three five-star players with Smith, Anthony Black, and Jordan Walsh, and also three four-star players to go along with. The class currently ranks number two in the nation behind only Duke. Really, really impressive job what they're doing over there in Fayetteville. All right, thank you guys again for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Coming up next, we are going to run through some of those betting odds from our friends at betonline.ag. Some odds to win the SEC next year. We'll run through those in just a second. Uh, first off, I want to remind you guys about our friends over at Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one spot for all your betting needs and sports information. You can find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's NBA playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, fights, even next season's NFL futures. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head on over to their website today, use your mobile device, and learn about the trends in action. I mentioned some of those early NFL lines. NFL schedule comes out tonight, Thursday night, and uh, you'll be able to, I'm sure they're going to have some of those lines up for you looking ahead to next season. Of course, some college football futures as well, Heisman odds, all that kind of stuff. Bet online, gun bookmark it in your phone, betonline.net. It should be your number one go-to source for all your sports betting information. Bet online, it is where the game starts.
Roll along here, Locked On SEC. Thank you guys again for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Also, make sure to check out our Locked On NBA Big Board. Host Raphael Barlow from the NBA Draft Junkies and author of the NBA Big Board newsletter. He will be joined by Richard Stamen, Sam Ferris, and Leif Thulin giving fans an in-depth look into the NBA Draft, mock draft, player rankings, and of course, Big boards, a lot of SEC players on that. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. All right, I wanted to jump into a little betting action because our friends over at BetOnline.ag have put out some early betting odds on chances to win the SEC championship in 2022, um, 2022 football season. So let's run through it. First off, they have Alabama as the odds on favorites. You can't even get they're, – they're even money favorites. You can't even get anything uh, uh, of value on Alabama right now. So let's throw Alabama out the window. Safe to assume they're usually always the favorite to win the SEC. And right now, betonline.ag has Alabama as the odds-on favorite. But behind them, get a little value in Georgia. They've got Georgia 5-4. to four, So a little over – you know, a little over even money odds. So – not a bad bet for Georgia. Not great. But then you get some pretty good odds as you go down the way. Texas A&M is 11-1. to 1. Pretty good odds. If you think Jimbo Fisher can pull off the what we said was the impossible a year ago, but the impossible again, and beat Alabama and Nick Saban. He finally got the monkey off his back. A Saban assistant finally beat Saban. Not only that, Kirby did it in the championship. So two former Saban assistants got the monkeys off their back and beat Saban. But, look, the Aggies just put together a historic recruiting class, a lot of five-star talent. If they can figure out the quarterback thing, they're going to have a good defense. they got a dominant run game. Not bad odds. I may not be picking AM to win the SEC West, but at 11-1, I think that's worth a flyer. Then you got two teams. Really interesting. They've got Florida and Ole Miss at 33 to 1. So basically, you're saying behind AM, Ole Miss, maybe going to finish third in the West. And then Florida, they're putting right behind, you know, Georgia basically finishing second in the East. And yeah, that's how you can kind of look at it if you're going by betting odds. You could also take a step back and say, well, you know, maybe these guys have easier schedules than some of the other teams. But Florida and Ole Miss both at 33-1. to 1. It's not crazy. The Ole Miss win is a little crazy, right? We don't know if Jackson Dart's going to win that job. We don't know what that Ole Miss team is going to look like because they have so many piece, new pieces. The Florida team is intriguing just because I like Anthony Richardson a lot. I think he is going to be a star. My biggest problem with Florida is lack of depth. If anybody gets hurt, you know, I think the defense can be competitive. But, you know, big shoes to fill for Billy Napier coming in year one. I think a lot of people are kind of giving him a pass. Yeah, we hope he wins, but I don't think Florida fans are expecting them to beat Georgia in year one. But if they do, if they are able to pull off the miracle and they beat the Georgia Bulldogs, that's good value at Florida 33 to 1 over at Bet Online. Behind them, it's Kentucky and Tennessee at 40 to 1. I this one's interesting because I just think like maybe the money's coming in on Florida. Because Kentucky and Tennessee. If you go by a lot of the preseason projections, they have Kentucky and Tennessee finishing either second or third behind Georgia in the East ahead of Florida. But again, good value. If you think Kentucky can break through and win the SEC, if you think Tennessee and Hendon Hooker, some people like Hendon Hooker as a dark horse Heisman candidate. If he's in the Heisman contention, then that means Tennessee is in SEC uh, championship contention. Then you kind of get to some of your longer odds. LSU is at 50 to 1. Brian Kelly, who knows? He's another one who dug up in the transfer portal. Got a great track record as a head coach. He's got a winning pedigree. Now he's going to have some of the better talent he's ever had in his coaching career. No offense to those guys he coached at Notre Dame. He's going to have more four and five star talent at LSU as he starts to recruit there. But if you think they're a little bit ahead of schedule, you want to take a flyer on LSU 50 to 1 to win the SEC this year, go right ahead. Behind that, it's Arkansas and Auburn. Again, a lot of people would have Arkansas ranked ahead of LSU here. So Arkansas, 66-1 to to win the SEC. My opinion, that's worth a bet. If you want to put 5 10 bucks on that one, that is worth a flyer. Auburn, I'm not so sure on. 
Love Tank Bigsby, but the question marks at quarterback. And uh, Brian Harson, can he ever get this thing figured out? I know it's only in year two, but you know, firing your coordinators and retooling this offense and everything, it'll be interesting. Auburn will be an adventure. I would not be taking a chance on Auburn to win the SEC this year, but Arkansas worth a flyer. And then the really long shots. South Carolina at 101. Again, this is me because I'm one of the uh, members of the Spencer Rattler fan club. I would take a chance on South Carolina. It's 100 to 1, right? Come on. Throw 10 bones on it and have some fun watching South Carolina and Shane Beamer go at it this year. Behind that, it's Mississippi State at 200 to 1. So Mike Leach, Will Rogers, look, they're going to win some games they're not supposed to this year. I just don't know. It's a pretty tough ask to say, hey, Mike Leach, go beat Alabama, Arkansas, A&M, LSU, Ole Miss. You know, it's it's a little bit of a tough ask. But Will Rogers, I think, is going to be right back up there among the league leaders in the SEC in passing once again. So maybe if you're a, a true Starkville fan, you'll put a little money on Mississippi State. Then behind them, Missouri at 401 and Vanderbilt at 501. Vanderbilt's got no shot, and Clark Lee is just, he's in a tough spot. He know what he got in, himself into. Missouri, though, at 401. If Eli Drinkwitz can figure out the quarterback thing, if it's Brady Cook or, you know, if that defense can maybe get a little bit better this year, who knows? Maybe they can win a game or two they're not supposed to in the East, but I don't think they're going to compete for the East. So just to recap, Betting odds, these are from our friends at BetOnline.ag, and these are going to change throughout the offseason as we get closer to the season. But Alabama and Georgia, there's no good value on betting on them, so forget them. A&M at 11-1 is worth a, worth a bet. I think Florida at 33-1 to is maybe worth a couple bucks. I think Kentucky and Tennessee are absolutely worth value bets at 40-1. to And then Arkansas at 66-1, to I would absolutely jump in on. And again, if you're... Living in Columbia, South Carolina, you may want to throw a little bone on South Carolina, 100 to 1. So those are the latest betting odds to win the SEC in 2022. Thank you guys again for making a Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Coming up next, USA Today put out their college football post-spring top 25. We'll tell you who they've got in there from the SEC. That's coming your way in just a second. Run along here, Locked On SEC, and I want to jump right into this. USA Today put out this week their college football post-spring top 25. Alabama, not defending champion Georgia, ranked number one. We'll get to that in just a second. But basically, they say this is the early outlook as we head into the summer months and set the stage for the start of camp and all that. Ranking in the postseason early top 25. Um We'll give you that at where they changed from pre-spring to where they have them now. And again, this is coming from USA Today. Go check out their full article if you want to see it. But coming to number 25, they've got Tennessee. Now, Tennessee was unranked in their pre-spring ranking. So uh, this is what they say in USA Today. It was quite a debut season for Josh Heupel after a late takeover at Tennessee and a boatload of losses in the transfer portal. He did find a quarterback in Hendon Hooker. This year should continue the program's ascent. Wide receiver Cedric Tillman should rack up big numbers. The O-line has most of its starting group back, but they must improve in pass protection. But scoring will not be a problem. It's a defense that will need to get better, allowing 421 yards per game last year. The biggest challenge is getting better play from the secondary that was near the bottom of all schools in college football last year. Yeah, I I like Tennessee as a preseason top 25 team. I'm seeing more and more of these uh, preseason polls, putting the balls in there. I think it's deserved, uh, deservedly so because of Hendon Hooker and the Josh Heupel offense. They're going to put up a lot, a lot of points. Can they get stops on defense is the question. Coming in at number 23 in the USA Today uh, post-spring rankings, and they had 20 uh, Kentucky at number 24, so they bumped them up a spot from pre-spr- uh, pre-spring to post-spring. And they say Mark Stoops quietly just wins at one of the toughest places to succeed in the SEC this year will be different because the Wildcats have greater expectations. Much of that optimism because of the return of quarterback Will Levis, who threw for 24 touchdowns, ran for nine, 
Chris Rodriguez was all conference at running back. Do have losses on the O line and receiver. Stoops has produced some strong defenses throughout the years. There were some big hits on the D line and secondary, but expect them to reload there at Kentucky. Kentucky coming in in their top 25. Coming in at number 21, they've got Arkansas. Now, pre spring, they had Arkansas 19th. They bumped them down two spots. So, Sam Pittman's success should no longer be a surprise. Razorbacks have gone from a program that won one conference game during the previous three years to winning seven in Pittman's first two seasons. KJ Jefferson will again be the focal point. He'll be working behind a mostly veteran O line that powered the number seven rushing attack in the country. The secondary will again be the backbone with Jaden Catalog, Jalen Catalog back there. Better play against the run is critical to better the nine wins they had from last year. So Arkansas, right outside their top 20 at USA Today. Now here's the catch. They have nobody from the SEC from 20 all the way up to nine. It's all schools from other conferences. But we do have two, uh, three teams in the top eight. At number eight, it is Texas A&M. And they write, uh, spring did not provide an answer for the one lingering concern for the Aggies quarterback. How do they get consistent play there? That will push them beyond, the, beyond that nine-win plateau that's become the program's identity. Well, you got Max Johnson from LSU. You got Haynes King, the injured quarterback from a year ago. And you got, got freshman Connor Weigman, all played in the spring game. Most of the other spots are full of talented recruits accumulated by Jimbo Fisher's Great recruiting class. Still, there remains doubt whether this is the season they can break through and win the SEC West, especially their trip to Alabama in October. They bumped AM down from five. Pre-spring, they had them fifth overall. Now they have them eighth overall, which I think is probably more where AM should be just while they uh, still try to figure out this quarterback situation. And again, once they name the starter, Haynes King or Max Johnson, I don't think it's going to change much. Whoever that guy is has to go out there and prove it on the field that he can be that guy. Coming in at number two in the USA Today rankings, they've got the Georgia Bulldogs. Number two, the reigning national champs. It says quarterback uncertainty loomed until Stetson Bennett decided to return, causing JT Daniels to transfer and push off the battle between backups Carson Beck and Brock Vandergriff. Running back should be fine with Kendall Milton, Milton and Kenny McIntosh. Brock Bowers is a star tight end. He doesn't even mention here, but Eric Gilbert being there is absolutely massive as well. They say the losses on defense are huge, especially in the front seven. However, Kirby Smart has plenty of elite recruits ready to step in with Jalen Carter and Nolan Smith as the vets. The same script from last year could unfold. An unbeaten regular season and a loss to Alabama in the SEC title game. And coming in at number one, I mean, not really much of a surprise at all. It is the Alabama Crimson Tide. It says the reasons for having the Tide here are obvious. Heisman Trophy winning quarterback Bryce Young, check. Best defensive player in the country, Will Anderson, check. Incoming impact transfers, check. So while the losses at wide receiver, running back, and O-line provide some pause about the prediction, Alabama still is the clear choice to top, uh, take the top spot coming out of spring. Impact newcomers coming in, Eli Ricks from LSU, Jermaine Burton from Georgia, the running back Jameer Gibbs from Georgia Tech, all stud players who should be instant impact players for the Alabama Crimson Tide. And there you have it. Those are the teams that uh, USA Today put in their college football post-spring top 25. Who are they missing that you think should be in there? I guess you could make a case for, I don't know, I mean, I've seen some. I've seen some that have. Uh, I've seen some that have. Uh, Brian Kelly, and LSU. Some people thinking of taking a chance on them. Uh, you know, sneaking in on the back end of the top twenty-five. Do you really like Spencer Rattler a lot? You really think he could be the difference maker in South Carolina? Maybe you know you could put South Carolina as a preseason top twenty-five team. Auburn, eh. Just tough because of how last season ended. If they beat Alabama in the Iron Bowl and like they were supposed to, and then they win the bowl game against you know whoever they would have played, we're probably feeling pretty more optimistic about Brian Harson and, and Auburn right now. Um, Mississippi State, I probably wouldn't put top twenty-five. Ole Miss, I think you know we just don't know. We don't know what any of these guys are going to look like at Ole Miss with all the all the new faces that they brought in there. I think they're going to be good. I mean, Lane Kiffin has shown his track record's pretty good. 
But uh, yeah, so there you have it. That is the latest going on around uh, the SEC. And that is just about going to do it for this edition of Locked on SEC. My thanks to you guys for making us your first listen every day. Now go make your second listen. Check out some of our other great podcasts around the SEC. You got Locked on LSU. You got Locked on Bama. You got Locked on Bulldogs. You got just about every school across the SEC that you want covered is there for you. I'm Chris Gordy. Thank you guys so much for listening to Locked on SEC. We will talk to you guys tomorrow right here on the podcast.